Solar energy is the future of home electricity generation. Whether it's panels on your roof or panels in your field, you may wonder, can I get solar PV installed at my house? How much will it cost? And is there anything else that I need to know? Well, in this video, we're gonna show you 10 things you need to know before you get solar PV installed. Let's get into it, but make sure you like and subscribe first. So the first question you need to ask is, is your roof suitable to fit solar panels on? Because in general, solar PV systems are fitted on roofs. Now, this one behind us is a perfect example of a roof that is ideal for solar. The ideal roof for solar is a nice big roof with lots of open space on it, no obstacles to get in the way of solar panels so you can put a nice big array. And ideally, you wanna fit about 10 panels as a minimum in order to be able to generate a decent amount of solar electricity. The these panels behind me are 400 watt panels. We've got basically six kilowatts of panels on each side of this roof. Now, the other thing that you need to think about as well is the orientation of your roof, because if you've got a nice big open roof, but it's north facing, for example, here in the UK, north facing roof is not the ideal place to put panels because the sun is not gonna be on that roof for very long during the day. If you're on a different part of the world, it might be the opposite way around. But here in the UK, we aim for a south facing roof, is ideal so that you get the most amount of sun throughout the day on that particular roof. But there are other setups that can be suitable too. For example, an east-west facing roof can be good. Sun rises in the east and sets in the west, so you get morning sun on the east side and afternoon sun on the west side, which is exactly what we've got here. The sun rises over there, sets over on the other side and so we've got a long day of generation from the sunrise in the morning to the sunset in the evening and we can actually get a really decent amount of power with an east face east west facing array best thing to do is look on google earth check the size and layout of your roof and that'll give you an idea if you've got enough space to put panels on now if you're not sure about your roof when you look at google earth get an installer who's local to you to just have a look for you. What we usually do with our customers, we ask them for their what three words location. If you give us your three words, we can see your exact location of your roof. Have a look on Google Earth and see what your roof is like. And we can give you a bit of free advice to tell you whether solar is gonna be suitable for you in your particular roof or not. There might be another option, which is field mounted solar or ground mounted solar. If you've got a nice amount of land, you could lay out a load of panels on a frame in your garden and you could have a really big system potentially then if you've got a decent amount of land that's not too far away from the house so you can get all the cables back and connect everything in. And that comes to our second point, which is what type of roof do you have? So this is a pretty standard roof. It's got um, plain tiles on it. It's quite new. It's a nice, easy roof to fit solar to. However, some roofs are a lot more complicated. For example, if you've got slate, it's gonna take you more time to install because slate roofs are more complicated to work with. If you've got a flat roof, that can really be tricky to get solar on because of structural engineer calculations being needed. Pitched roofs are generally over-engineered to be able to support quite a lot of weight, especially if they're fairly new but flat roofs are not. And so you will need to get advice from a structural engineer if you wanna put panels on a flat roof. So the type of roof that you have is really important to note and a good thing to tell your installer. What we usually ask for from customers is a photo of the roof, photo of what kind of tiles they are, and then that can help us to create a bespoke quote for our customers. Now the third point you need to think about is does your roof need repairs? If it's a very old roof, you might find that some tiles are broken, etc. And it would be a good time if you're getting solar fitted to look at getting some repairs done on your roof while scaffolding is up, etc. But the other thing you might need to consider is actually is it time for a new roof? Because if your roof is fairly close to being due to be replaced anyway, then you're gonna get panels fitted, it's a perfect time to go with an in-roof system rather than an on-roof system. An in-roof system is where the panels are actually recessed into the roof. So essentially you take all, most of the tiles off the roof, you put the panels on and then put tiles around the edge. And that can actually save you a lot of money if you're re-roofing because you're not having to put new tiles on and then put panels over the top. It also looks nicer. So 
that's something to consider as well if you want to go with an in-roof system something like Viridian can be a really good choice but you will need to get a roofer involved in that. We're just about to go up into the loft and the reason for that is to answer our fourth question how much weight can my roof take? Structural engineering calculations are important when fitting solar panels on any roof, not just a flat roof. So what we do when we do a site survey is we take measurements of all the roof trusses, the spacing of the trusses, the layout of the roof, etc. We send that all off to a structural engineer who does calculations and sends us a document to say whether it's approved to put a load of heavy solar panels on the roof. And the reason for that is that they weigh like 20 kilos each, plus all the mounting gear, etc. It could be like 30 kilos per panel that you're adding to your roof. So if you've got a roof like this, we fitted 32 panels. You're talking about six, seven, maybe 800 kilos that we've added to this roof. And you don't wanna be doing that without first checking with a structural engineer to make sure the roof can hold that extra weight. So make sure you get whoever does your quote or installation to check with a structural engineer first before they start sticking panels on your roof because you don't want your roof to fall down after a few years. <laughs> that would be a bit of a disaster. The fifth thing you need to think about is what size solar PV array do you want? And really that depends on a number of factors. Obviously the first one is how much can you fit, but you could end up fitting way more panels than you could ever possibly need. So the other factor you need to take into consideration is how much energy do you actually use in your house? Then you can size the solar PV system to generate just enough energy to cover your house needs and maybe a little bit extra to give you a bit of wiggle room. So what we usually advise customers to do is get the data from their smart meter. If you do have a smart meter, you can ask your energy supplier for half hourly usage data. And that data will be really vital in helping us to size the correct system for you. We'll be looking at how much energy do you use each day? How much energy do you use at different times of the year? So if you can give us a whole year's worth of data, that's really, really useful. And particularly we'll be looking at how much energy do you use overnight as well, which will come in when we're thinking about our sixth point. Do you need battery storage? Now for most people, battery storage takes solar to the next level. And the reason is that the sun is only shining during daylight hours. Sounds obvious, right? But what it means is that in the nighttime, if you have solar, it's not going to be generating anything. And often most of us, it's at night time when we run a hot bath, when we boil a kettle, when we've run the dishwasher, stuff like that. So how can you make use of your solar to run your stuff overnight? Well, it's by battery. The idea is to be able to generate during the day more solar than you actually need, but rather than exporting it out to the grid and getting next to nothing for it, storing it in a battery that then can be used overnight. So when we get your data, we'll be looking at your overnight usage. How much energy do you use from when the sun goes down to when it rises again in the morning? And based on that amount, we will size a battery system that should be able to cover most of that nighttime usage. For most households, it's between 10 and 20 kilowatt hours of energy, but your particular case could be different. So getting that data is really key to be able to size a system that will be perfect for you. Not too big, not too small, so that you get the right bespoke system for your, your situation. So the next thing you need to know is, is your electrical system up to the challenge of having solar added to it? Because solar is a significant addition to any electrical system. One thing that you do need to know is what size is your main cutout fuse? And if you want to know what that is, because most people don't even know that they have one, it's this thing here, this gray box. Sometimes it's black. It's got a label on it that says 100 amps, which is the rating of the main fuse. That essentially is limiting how much power your whole house can take. So can import, but also how much you can export as well. Um, 
In most cases, hopefully it's 100 amp, but some houses they have a 60 amp or an 80 amp main cutout fuse, and it may be limited by the size of the supply cable coming to your house. If you're on what's called a loop supply, where you've got a cable coming in the bottom and, and out again to your neighbor's house, then you will probably be limited to a 60 or 80 amp supply. So taking a picture of your meter box, with your cutout fuse and the meter etc will be really handy to send to your installer and they'll be able to tell you then what size is your main cutout fuse and whether any alterations or additions are needed before you can get solar fitted and that takes us to our next point which is is there space in your consumer unit This is a consumer unit or fuse box. Now that is what every house has, which controls and supplies the energy throughout your house. It usually consists of a main switch and then various circuit breakers, which we call MCBs, miniature circuit breakers or RCBOs, residual current circuit breaker with overcurrent protection. Um, this is an MCB and this is an RCBO. The difference is it's got a test button on an RCBO. Now this is actually a brand new consumer unit that we fitted for this particular solar PV system. But in a normal house, you probably have one that just feeds your sockets, your lights, your cooker, stuff like that. And it might be completely full. So there might not be any blanks in it any spare ways, in which case you may need to either upgrade your existing house consumer unit to a larger one or get an additional consumer unit fitted next to your main house consumer unit. Now in this case we're in a garage and the garage only had a very small power supply running to it, not big enough to connect solar PV, battery storage and an EV charger. So what we've done is run a whole brand new supply from the house with a big thick armoured cable running underground into here and a brand new consumer unit for this solar PV system. That means that we've got a nice hefty supply that can then feed the power back into the house, run everything in the house and feed any excess to the grid if needed. So what you're gonna need is a photo of your consumer unit or fuse box to send to your installer and then they'll be able to tell you whether your existing consumer unit is safe to add circuits to or whether you'd need to upgrade that or add an additional consumer unit. If you've got those old rewirable fuses, then you probably definitely need an electrical inspection first and then a fuse box upgrade. Uh, if your fuse box is full, then that's something that you need to consider too. But if you can take a picture with the flap up like this, showing the circuit breakers, then your installer will be able to give you advice on what you need to do. In general, for a solar PV system, you need to add one circuit minimum sometimes two, like in this particular case, we've got one circuit for the inverter and then one for the supply for the mod bus. We've also added another circuit for the MyEnergy Zappi EV charging point, And we've added another circuit for the battery storage system, which is gonna be a MyEnergy Libby. So we've actually added four circuits here. Um, actually five, because we put an extra circuit for a little socket under the board as well. You can do that if you've added a new consumer unit, but if you're limited to only one or two spare ways in an old consumer unit, it makes it more tricky. Another thing you need to consider is where can the inverter and battery storage system be located? A solar inverter is quite a large piece of equipment and battery storage is even larger, so you need a decent amount of space to fit them. And most people don't want them just on the wall of their living room. So do you have a suitable location indoors where you could fit them? A garage is often the perfect place. But let me show you what kind of space we're looking at here. So in this particular situation, we've got about a 2.4 by two meter space set out. We fit these backer boards and they're 1.2 meters by 0.8 meters. So we've got 2.4 meters wide here by 1.6 high plus a bit of, of floor height, about two meters high. And this is ideal. If you have a garage with a nice blank wall, it's absolutely perfect for you to be able to fit all the equipment because you want it to be able to be laid out neatly like this and easily accessible for service and maintenance in future. This is the inverter. As you can see, it's a fairly large box. You've also got the mod bus, you've got the AC isolator for the inverter and you've got the generation meter and these DC surge protection devices for the two strings of solar PV panels plus the two DC isolator switches and the consumer unit and we've got a network switch to power the um, internet to all of these devices too. 
plus here we're going to have 20 kilowatt hours of battery storage so we're going to have a my energy libby going here with another 10 kilowatt hour um, of modules here so that's going to take up all of this space so for a typical setup like this 8 kilowatt inverter 20 kilowatt hours of battery storage you're going to need a decent amount of space on the wall and i would say as a minimum you're going to want two meters of width by two meters of height but if you've got a little bit more it's it's perfect we like to be able to fit four backer boards like this as i say 2.4 meters wide is spot on and that gives us enough space to just lay everything out really neatly and nicely make it look good make it easy to access for maintenance so do you have enough space is an important consideration now you might wonder well i don't have any space inside can i put it outside you can, all of these devices are IP rated, so they can be installed outside. However, they will take more of a battering outside than they do inside. So it's better if they can go inside. However, if you have no choice, we could fit them outside with a few little modifications and you could always build some kind of like shelter around them potentially if you want to hide them and you know don't have them on view so much but definitely aim for inside if possible and a garage is a perfect spot for that now the final thing you want to think about is scaffolding to get up on that roof there are various safety hazards to think about you don't want your electrician falling off and breaking their back so what we always do is fit scaffolding around the roof to make it safe for us to work at height on the roof to fit the solar panels um, here it's quite easy because it was a single story building but sometimes you know higher buildings require more scaffolding and that can be a significant cost so it's something to take into consideration can you fit scaffolding around your house for example sometimes you'll get a property with a conservatory or lots of obstacles and it makes it really tricky to install scaffolding this place for example we had one complication which was that the back side of the garage actually backs onto the neighbor's house so we had to put scaffolding in the neighbor's garden fortunately the lady was lovely and she allowed us to do that but you may want to consider talking to your neighbors if you're thinking about getting solar and just checking if it's okay to put some scaffolding up on the part that's in their garden so that you don't come unstuck when it comes to doing the installation because any good installer will want to do it safely and properly which means getting up some scaffolding. A final bonus point for you, which I didn't mention earlier when it comes to the panels, is you'll see behind me, we have a bird protection around the panels. It's like a skirt that runs all the way around the panels. It's called solar skirt. And it's the form of bird protection that we use because it looks really nice. You may want to ask your installer whether they've included bird protection in the quote or not, because the amount of times that pigeons nest under panels and cause chaos, is beyond belief so if you don't get bird protection fitted you might you know save yourself a couple hundred quid now but it could cost you a lot more in the long run to get the panels taken off to clear out all the birds nests and sometimes the birds can even cause damage to the panels and the pv cables beneath and, and cause some really serious um, problems so always best to get bird protection fitted and good to ask your installer have they quoted for bird protection and what kind of bird protection they quoted for because some of it looks really ugly it's just like a wire mesh that goes around the panels it looks really hideous if you can get something like solar skirt it's a little bit more expensive but it looks top notch and adds a nice finish to the whole look to make the panels look like they were really made to sit on your roof so i hope that video has been a benefit to you if it has make sure you like and subscribe because we do lots of content about renewables and if you think of somebody else who might benefit from it why not share it online with somebody else who could enjoy this video but either way we hope this video has been a benefit to you if you do want a quote for solar artisan electrics have a network of partners throughout the uk who we have vetted and checked and approved that work to our high standards in Cambridgeshire we'll do the install for you but elsewhere we've got amazing partners who can help too so click the link below where you can fill out our online survey form and get a quote from us to do your solar PV system but either way thanks for watching and have a great day.